Welcome to TTP Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. You're listening to Keeman Cooper and John Dugan. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get a pizza as big as your table across the Fowd Coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes. Blackpool. Let's talk wrestling. Hello, welcome to Turnbuckle Talk podcast. I'm joined by the Scottish stud, John Dugan, as always, my co-host. Hello. Hello, how are you? And I'm good, and my name's Kieran Cooper. Um, that was quite formal, that <laughs> introduction, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I went so formal. Um, hello, uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, so today's episode is on when wrestling goes off script so the moments that it kind of it comes off the rails essentially so we've got two picks each um and i don't think i know what you've picked and i don't think you know what i've picked so it should be interesting um hopefully we'll not pick the same because that'd be awkward and <laughs> probably not a great show so let's get straight into it john dugan scottish stud what have you got first oh well do I go with a big one or my other one? Do we start with the big one? Hey, you go however you feel. Okay. This so is your moment. My first pick is because it, it changed wrestling. Uh, the Montreal screw job. Yeah. Now there's debate whether this is off script or not because some people think this was planned, but it, I don't think it was. It definitely isn't. If you see the raw emotion on everyone's face. Yeah. So just a rundown of what happened, because there'll be people that don't know what it is. I think when I first met you and our mate Callum, you didn't know the gist of it really, did you? Who Callum? No, <laughs> no, you didn't get the gist of the Montreal screw job, what it was. I know I, I, I did, but I just I didn't know how in depth it was. Like mm. and I've recently read into it and it's just there's a lot of crazy turns in it. So so basically um, Bret Hart, the, the, it's really it's really complicated to explain this. Let me think. Okay, so it's ninety seven. Two of the biggest stars in the WWF is Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Now, uh, biting at the heels of the WWF is WCW, who's um, you know they're beating them in the ratings. They're getting all the good top talent they've got Hulk Hogan and they're trying to say Bret Hart who's a massive fan favourite in WWF like he's biggest merchandise seller selling sunglasses t-shirts you name it mm -hmm. and they offer Bret Hart <clears throat> I think it was something like 8 million a year and guaranteed dates at the time wrestlers didn't really get that they sort of had to work all year round and they weren't they didn't have a guaranteed money it's just depending on what you wrestled but this was guaranteed money so Bret Hart said to Vince like I've been offered this from WCW I don't want to leave what can you offer me so then because the Hart family and, and WWF at the time I mean, still, they're really close. They look after, he kind of looks after the Hart family and stuff like that. So Vince McMahon goes, right, I can give you a 20-year contract, whether you get injured or not, it's 20 years, and you'll get a million a year, guaranteed, like minimum. So Bret Hart's like, that's fine. I'm happy with that because it's a guaranteed contract. But WCW starts beating the WWF big time and like um and like ratings and WWF is losing money. So Vince McMahon has to go back on what he's promised Bret Hart and he's like, look, I'm sorry. I can't honor this deal. I can't offer you I can't offer you this one million a year contract. I just can't afford it. Go and take the money. Go with WCW, take the money, come back leaving good terms. So Brett like, fine. He goes back to WCW. <laughs> it's not 8 million anymore. They're offering him 
I think it was roughly like three million a year, which is still more than he was getting at WWF. So he's signed his deal with WCW, but he's champion at the time. And his last match is going to be in Montreal. It's kind of hometown. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> he doesn't want to lose his last match in his hometown. <laughs> Which is fair enough. It's Canada. He's a heel. At, he's kind of heel at the time. He's kind of anti-American, but obviously in Canada, you know, loved. But I don't know if you ever know what's scary. Vince McMahon loves wrestlers to lose in their hometown. Like he loves it. Like you, you can tell if someone's going to lose a match because they're at home. He <laughs> does it all the time. Um. So, because it's his last match and he's champion, Vince McMahon's like right. Breaking care for beer, but it's like you're gonna have to drop the bell. I want you to drop it, Shawn Michaels. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, but basically, Bret Hart doesn't like Shawn Michaels because he disrespected him in a bar at some point. Um, I think the gist of it is, <coughs> uh, Bret Hart said to him once, like, um, you know, I'm really happy. I'm dropping the belt to you. Um, it's an honour to give it to you. And Shawn Michaels, he was a bit of a knob at the time. He, he's, yeah, he's, he's very cocky. Isn't he? <laughs> he's, he's different now. He's kind of, he's a born again Christian, but at the time he's very cocky, very out for himself. Says to Bret Hart, that's, that's all well and good. Yeah, well done, but I wouldn't do the same to you. So <laughs> Bret Hart took that to heart and was like, right, so when they said you're dropping the belt to Shawn, uh, but it's like, no, no way. I'll drop it to anyone, but I'm not dropping it to Sean. But they've already booked the match for SummerSlam, so it's obviously advertising that. Bret Hart even said he'll <laughs> drop it on the next night on mm-hmm. Raw. Which like is just not... ha- he said he'd just hand the belt over. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so there's a lot to and fro, and they're like, look, we'll meet you. We'll, you're dropping the belt. You have to drop the belt. We'll make you look a million dollars. You're dropping the belt. And but I was like, no, I'm not dropping the belt, I'm not doing it. So there's a lot to him from. Then eventually they go, right, okay, you're not dropping the belt. However, <laughs> they don't want him to keep the belt and then suddenly appear on WCW with the WWF belt because it's, you know, it's the biggest thing you can have in WWF. So <clears throat> from there's a lot of different things going on, and a lot of people have different opinions of what happened but Triple H has said it was his idea that those just it's called a screw job because they're telling Brett there's going to be one outcome but it's not it's a totally different one and they're basically screwing the match so that it's an outcome they want not what he wants so there's only a few people who knew it. it was Vince McMahon Shawn Michaels and Triple H. The ref apparently didn't know till he was making his way down to the ramp. So it's the main event. They're having this, so they're doing this match, and there's, there's they kind of planned the match a bit. So they said like Shawn Michaels is going to try and do your f- submission hold on you, and then you're going to reverse it and pin him, and you win the match, kind of thing. But what they did was. So Sean Michaels does his submission hold and <laughs> Vince McMahon runs in and he shouts, ring the effing bell and Sean Michaels wins the match. Now, at the time, k was a big thing. No one knew what was going on. Um, you, just, you, you just no idea what's happening because... You know, they do replays. You don't see Bret Hart tapping. Um, they screwed Bret. <laughs> and Bret, Hart. Bret looks particularly, like, bamboozled for about five seconds. Yeah, he's still got a hold of Shawn Michaels. They've told Shawn, as soon as the match is over, make your way out of there. So, like I said, they told the ref as he was going to, down. It was uh, Earl Hebner. Because he, he had no idea. Um Bret Hart goes out shit. He he smashes monitors because he's know it's going to cost him money. He spits in Vince McMahon's face. He not only spits, he 
it's a huge so it, it's right at the end of the match I mean it's, you can still watch it it's just carnage the reason this is like off script is because this wasn't meant to happen um, so then there's a, a good documentary Brett Hart dead leading up to this not knowing this was going to happen um, he's writing WCW on the uh, screen to tell everybody where he's going the crowd are booing like crazy um, after that <laughs> Bret Hart goes backstage he's having a shower and so before and apparently Vince McMahon said to people look he's going to punch me just let him get out of his system is what you know he's uh, he deserves to be allowed to have that shot at me so I was like you sure <laughs> so he's like that. he goes to talk to him while he's showering and Bret Hart's like if you don't get out I'm going to knock you out and Vince is like, look, I'm really sorry. What do you expect me to do? Which, to be fair, I'm kind of am on the side of Vince McMahon because what do you do? He's kind of held him to ransom. And Vince McMahon had been held ransom before. Like, Jeff Jarrett did it. The Old mm. Memorial did it. Where they were yeah. like, you need to pay me or I'm not wrestling. And you're like, you're on the main event. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Bret Hart takes his shower. Stops it, he turns around and he knocks Vince McMahon out cold. Um, and so the aftermath of that is so there was a few promises made to Bret Hart that they wouldn't uh disrespect him. Um, so the next night, because Vince McMahon now has got to like explain to people what's happened, which is the invention of the Mr. McMahon character. Which is why this is such a game changer because you would not have had that character, so you wouldn't have had the Stone Cold versus McMahon sort of feud because Vince McMahon at the time didn't want to be known as being the owner of the company. He just wanted to be a commentator and yeah. kind of run things backstage. Mm -hmm. So he does this famous interview with JR and he's like, he does this Brett Screw Brett line that's pretty famous. And Sean <laughs> Michaels and Triple H have. Um, like a dwarf come out with a Bret Hart uh, mask on on the Raw and yeah and that I had WCW usual I know I, I try and make him look good but they're not they just dropped the ball mm. they didn't know yeah. what to do with him you've got the biggest thing to ever have happened in wrestling in this screw job and they brought him in and they made him a special guest referee they didn't play on the fact of what had happened to him. They just waste, Brett. I mean, they waste money with him. Screw Brett. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's my pick. I mean, WCW did the equivalent of signing Lionel Messi and putting him in goal. Huh. Like, what were they doing? They had one of the best wrestler, one of the best wrestlers of the time, and they didn't do anything with him. The thing with the Montreal screw job is like, Sean Michael said, I had no idea that they were going to do that. <laughs> for, for, a long time, for a long time, Sean Michael was denied it, but he actually, I think he actually said he did know about it. Yeah, they, they did an interview together, didn't they? On, um... But, you know, Sean Michael is open. He, he's like, look, I was a prick. Mm. I'm different now, but I was a prick back then. And, you know, he was leaving to go to a rival company. I think Brett should have just Brett could have been the bigger man and just dropped the title anyway. Then none of that would happen. But then if he'd have done that, you know, like I said, you wouldn't have had the attitude era and all that sort of kicking off. Can you imagine if that hadn't if that hadn't happened? You don't get the Mr. My Man character. So who's that rival to Stone Cold? Yeah, it is a big Back to the Future moment. You know where something happens and it kind of changes the course of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, every, every wrestling fan knows that incident. I remember, so I read Bret Hart's book, which is fascinating, and he talks about this Montreal Screwjob, but I, I couldn't get my gist of what he was talking about. Because, again, I was sort of not knowing how wrestling worked at the time. And I was like, what, what do you mean? You were meant to win and you were kind of... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... And obviously at the time, it was 97, they were still kind of 
it wasn't fully known. I don't mm-hmm. I don't think people and we say this, I think we say this every episode. <laughs> I don't think people understand. No one knew. It's not like now. I, I had no I had, I had no reason to go on the internet and go, is wrestling fake and search for it. I had no reason well, to. Mainly because you'd be there for two hours with the internet and <laughs> Well yeah. <laughs> but um yes, I think it's it's probably the biggest moment in wrestling because it's just changed the whole landscape. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go for my pick. Um, Cut Angle and Shane McMahon. Yeah. Now, you can, e- you can easily say, oh, this went off, this went off script because, you know, there's a few mistakes, a few things went, you know. But if you look into the actual final detail, there's a, lot in, there's a lot in this story that you wouldn't know. For example, so it's King of Ring and it's Cut Angle um, against Shane McMahon. Mm. Cut Angle wrestled Christian in the event first, which uh, Cut Angle thought he had a concussion against Christian. Turns out he didn't, but he doesn't remember. Um, he, remember he only remembers half of the, his next match, which was against Edge. Right. And then his final match was against Shane McMahon. Now, Cut Angle has stated that Shane McMahon isn't a wrestler he isn't a wrestler he's an athlete and he makes up with it because he he, he does steal the show and he does some ballsy stuff mm. and um, I didn't know this but so I mean Kangle says you know he's not a gimmick kind of wrestler he doesn't like tables and ladders and you know dustbins he just wants to wrestle you know like uh, like a you know like, he like did a wrestler in, uh, yeah, like in the Olympics and stuff. So he said, look, Shane, you do whatever you want and let me know. So Shane and Al Snow actually choreographed that match. Oh, Most of it was Al Snow. Yeah. Mm. And you know, Al Snow is like, he's a nutcase. <laughs> um, so they start wrestling and um, Shane and Kurt in the ring. Kurt Angle cut, um, is busted open. There's a few um, high spots. Um, then they go on to the ramp where Shane uh, counters the suplex and Kurt mm. Angle slams onto his... He takes a bump, but he yeah. breaks his tailbone. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> if you remember the promo video, Don't Try This At Home, mm. it features in that. Right. So... Um, Kurt Angle's got a broken tailbone. Now, the arm... you carry on? Um... Well, if you, if you look at the match, instantly his arms just stiffen up and he looks in so much pain. And mm. um, so they go over to the... <laughs> to the... What do, you, what do you call it? Like the uh, the glass, the kind yeah. of the actual entrance. There's like glass displays on there of the event. Yeah. Now, they didn't want to use pyro because... Um, the glass was meant to be made out of sugar glass and if he used pyro the sugar glass would have smashed mm-hmm. so they said no pyro because it will ruin the, the effect of the match so they go over and Kurt Angle belly to belly slams Shane through the glass or he's meant to mm. but it's Shane's head so he bounces off the glass and Shane's head hits the concrete floor with an enormous thud it's disgusting. It's, the sound is crazy, isn't it? Um, and the commentators are even like, "Whoa!" Like they're shocked, and you can see the referee kind of holding, you know, you know the hand that the, uh, the referee does, not sure they're Yeah. Um, and apparently Shane says, "Throw me again." So they do it again, and um, Shane goes through the glass this time. Um, and it smashes into a million pieces. Mm-hmm. So it was meant to get sugar glass, sugar glass which is... Um, it, I made yes. of sugar. <laughs> yeah, it, sm- it smashes in, in little pieces. It doesn't but, cut you, does it? No. I mean, they use it in, like, soaps and stuff like that, don't they? Yeah. Films. But what they actually got is, um, p- like, pyroglass. Mm. Um, so it's... You know the stuff they use at the um, NFL, not the NFL. Sorry, the ice hockey. 
Yeah. We use that and it's... It's like it, Perspex, that, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, Perspex, yeah. Yeah. And that shatters like, like proper glass. So when Shane goes through it, it just but, it just smashes and it looks it looks like a horrendous bump. Because it's kind of like safety glass, isn't it? You know, like because it shatters, but it's not meant to kind of go anywhere. That's why they use it in the hockey. So like when a a chop like a hockey puck hits it, it'll shatter, mm. but it'll yeah. just kind of drop. It won't yeah. go everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. You, yeah, I mean, oh, God. Someone um, must have lost a job over that, surely. Well, I'll get to that. So then <laughs> um, Shane is meant to go back through the glass on mm -hmm. you know, the next panel. <laughs> Yet again, belly to belly, hits the, bounces off the, the glass and slams down. And you can see Kurt Angle quickly like, hover over Shane and ask him if it's okay. Now, this is a bit that's intriguing. The referee, people don't think the referee does that much. Mm. which is utter nonsense because the referee steps in front of the camera he purposely because the, the cameraman is in the like inside where Shane gets chucked through and he steps purposely in front of the camera and speaks to them both because um, it's Mike I can't remember second I can never remember his second name Mike Shona Sh Sh Shenoda something like yeah. that yeah so mm. he's been told um, do not let them go through the glass again. Get him back to the ring and just end this match. So Mike is just going, guys, come on, let's let's get this back to the ring. Shane apparently swearing at Kurt Angle, throw me again, throw me through the in glass. <laughs> and Shane's like, right, okay. Now Kurt Angle is saying in his head, this isn't his match. He's gonna have more matches in the future. This is Shane's match. So. Um, Shane was like, right, uh, sorry, Kang was like, right, I'm going to do what Shane says, and he throws him through, bounces off it again, and this this time they both peed off, so Kang gets him by the scruff of the neck and throws him through. <laughs> um, and it just looks horrendous. It's a great match to watch, but like, when you realise what's happened, well, like, the mix up with the glass and that, it's just... Yeah. I mean... So Shane goes flying through on the other side, um, and he's just he's just out of it. And then I didn't even mention when Kurt Angle does the belly to belly suplex, he can barely hold him because he's got he's a broken got, elbow. Yeah. I've, so his his strength is just it's not as strong as it normally is. Mm. Um, so then they're both lying there and they they cut open everything and. Kurt Angle realises, I need to get him to the ring to, to win this match. But Kurt Angle's hobbling around. Shane looks dead. <laughs> so, um, ingeniously, he gets like a, what do you call it, like a caddy, don't he? Like a big equipment kind of caddy. Mm. And he literally wheels him on. And he's like wheeling him on with his, like, his broken tailbone. Gets to the ring. And so they meant to have a big finish which was um, an angle slam off the top rope. But mm. Shane's vision isn't all there, so there's no way they can stand on the ropes. So Kurt Angle puts him on the ropes, and he gets this massive two-by-four, like this massive plank of wood, sorry, and um, just starts hitting him on the back. And then, yet again, ingeniously, he puts it, he slots it on top of the rope so they can both stand on it. Um, and Mike holds the... The ref holds the uh, the plank in place. Mm. They, they do the um, cat angle slam, and uh, angle gets a pin. But like, there's so many elements of like the fact that cat angle is so unselfish to think this is his match. Yeah, let's let's just do it. Um, and as for the guy who got the, who ordered the wrong glass, um, he he was no longer seen. <laughs> uh, to, um, uh, who, who was it said it, it was um, Bruce Pritchard yeah, we, yeah, uh, Pritchard. Bruce, yeah. Bruce Pritchard um, I mean and, it's a big it's it's not like a small mistake uh, that's yeah and what was he thinking like they went right we need sugar glass so he's just like oh, any glass will throw 
Well, apparently he was um, brought on because he did a lot of special effects in Hollywood. Right. And he wasn't he wasn't um, that known. He wasn't that um, educated about wrestling special effects. So I guess right. he thought it would it would just work, or maybe he got it wrong. I don't know. But, I mean, yeah, he came from a Hollywood Hollywood background. Imagine that, but that feels like to go through a glass that doesn't break. Like, yeah. that easy. But it's, the, it's just the facts that, like, they know they have a job to do. Kurt Angle has got a broken tailbone. Shane Man <laughs> is getting annoyed because, mm. he, you know, he can't finish the match like he wants to. He can't do the spot like he, him and Al Snow planned. And he just says to Kurt Angle, throw me through the glass. Uh, it's the main event, isn't it? Was it the main event? Uh... It was in the top card. I don't think it was the main event. Um, but then also, this is... imagine Vincent Mann watching that. Your son is being pelted through glass, which is clearly the wrong glass. <laughs> yeah. Um, when Kurt Angle they, got backstage, he got... They don't know glass. that, do they? So, uh, yeah. obviously, it doesn't go through. <laughs> um, Kurt Angle got a proper telling off by Vincent Mann. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's because he was just the first person, like he was the person to blame, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was the first person that came into contact with him. Um, and Vince, Vince apologised afterwards. What I quite like about some unscripted moments is that the wrestlers have got to think on their feet on what to do. Well, you but, see that quite a lot. Yeah. This is a good example as well about the referee. Mm. The referee was getting communications in his ear. Fair enough, they didn't listen to it, but he got communications. He yeah. um, held the kind of, he slightly kind of held the, the plank oh, in place. Yeah, a referee does so much. I don't think people realise that because they've, usually they've got vents or somebody in their ear because that's why you can change a result saying, kind of during a match. Um, but yeah, they kind of orchestrate all, don't they? Because they're the one not getting hit. So they're the one with clear mind on what's yeah. kind of happening. Yeah. I just I, I just love this match because it's it has the high flies, it has this you know the the cool stunt spot, has a big mm. finish, and everyone plays the part. The referee, Shane, Kurt Angle. Um yeah, it's just it's just, it's a great match. Um I mean what a referee bit, and this isn't my pick. Have you ever seen the uh Jeff Hardy and Sting match where Jeff Hardy's totally out of it? I have seen that, yeah. That is so clever. If you're going to watch how some somebody does something clever, that's the one to watch because so it's just a quick one with us. Jeff Hardy's on painkillers, drugs, and all sorts, and decides to turn up for this match. But so the people running the show don't realize how bad he is till he's actually out there and he's stumbling mm -hmm. around and he's and you can see in his face, he's just out of it. And it's the main event, and it was against Sting. Was it TNA? I think it was TNA. Um, so Eric Bischoff at the time was the guy running it. So he's got to go out and try and like savour this and what it is. So he comes out to make it look like he's making an announcement of what's and changing the rules of the match. But he's as he, he you see him, he like drops the mic and he's saying to Sting like Jeff's like not whether you need to pin him like for real and get out of here. So that's what he does. He basically pins him. And you, Jeff Hardy's trying to kick out because he's like, the match only really lasts for like a minute. <laughs> but it's interesting to see how like, they've really got to think on their feet sometimes. Yeah. Um, just, just to sign that onto that is, like, what makes a sport a sport? I think a sport is something that you like, enjoy and something you have to carry on no matter what. Mm, you mean. Yeah. And that is just, it has all elements of that. It just it just shows what athletes and how clever and how well trained they are. Well, yeah, that's. Um, I mean, my next example isn't a good example of that, but um, yeah, like it's amazing what they go for. I mean, do you remember Finn Balor when he dislocated his arm? Yeah, I mean, in he, place, he, didn't he? and he he made it worse because he had to go like rehab to fix it, but he literally like popped his arm back in. Tennis yeah. the match because he was like, there are some wrestlers like that who are like, no, I'm finishing this match no matter what. Mm. But yeah, it's me. I like people don't realize, I think it's just that's it. Like, even with Sugar Glass, 
it's still going to be painful to go through it like it was. But the fact it wasn't even sugar blast, it was like imagine though, just trying to pull. <laughs> Shane, what Shane McMahon is what thirteen stone. Yeah, me. yeah. We're trying to fall that with a broken tailbone. Mm. Like, the pressure, the pressure, isn't it? The pressure mm. alone would be. Oh, I don't want to think about it. So, <laughs> right. Go on. What's your next pick? So my next one is um, it involves Shawn Michaels again, which I didn't realise when I picked these. <laughs> but this is kind of, I kind of, I am on the side of Shawn Michaels with this one. But it's Shawn Michaels kind of spitting his dummy out and giving Hulk Hogan a big F you to him. So the backstory of this, Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels have only ever had one match and this is the match, right? So, the <laughs> again, it's a wrestler going, not doing that. But Hulk Hogan's famous for saying, that doesn't work for me, brother. And this is the clear moment of it. So it's SummerSlam. It's the main event, right? So it's the big match. There's loads. There's loads of build up to it. I watched it, and so once I tell you the story, go and watch it. And if you watch Shawn Michaels' expression when Hulk Hogan's coming down to what he's about to do to him, is unreal. So, um, so basically, before SummerSlam, the the plan was. Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, never had a match, so we're going to have two matches. Hulk Hogan will win the first, and then Shawn Michaels will win the rematch. Because usually with matches, you get a rematch. Hulk Hogan goes, man, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the one match with Shawn. I'm not... I don't want to. So Shawn Michaels is like, what? <laughs> How's that fair? Um, and then you got to bear in mind... Hulk Hogan went to the rivals, tried to put them out of money, tried to make Shawn Michaels lose his job, and then he's like, no, I'm not putting you over. You put me over, and that's it. <laughs> so, and it's, it's, Shawn Michaels is a born, and again, Christian at this point. So he's nice, but that's is really, like, got his back up. So, like I say, you've watched the SummerSlam. It's the main event. And you, <laughs> so Shawn Michaels does his entrance, <clears throat> and he's he's got a plan in mind. Paul Hogan does his massive entrance. He's got a massive. It's a real like American flag. The crowd are totally going for Hogan. They love Hogan. He's so over. It's unreal. <laughs> and you just see a little. <laughs> you just see a little smirk on Shawn Michaels' uh, face. So, it's basically right. When you wrestle. Really, you should. The plan is that you both look, you both make each other look good for parts of the match, right? <laughs> so that, you know, you'll sell what they're doing. So you make it look realistic, though. So say I was to punch you in the face during a match, you'd be like, ah, oh, as if I've hit you a ton of bricks. And that was a good you do the sell, same to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? I'm yeah. not a wrestler, so I can't do it. <laughs> However, uh, what what Shawn Michaels does here is called overselling, where it's ridiculous. <laughs> so <coughs> I mean, you have to watch it, but so Hulk, Hulk Hogan is going over in this match. He's going to win the match, but anytime he takes a punch or um, like a kick from. Oh, Hold on. It's a punch or a kick from Hulk Hogan. He's overselling it as if he's been hit with a ton of bricks. He mm. gets hit. There's times he's just sort of like gets a little hit and he's falling over backwards. He's outside the ring and he's like, oh my God. Uh, Hulk Hogan's got him in the corner of the match. He's kicking him and he's going about 10 feet in the air. It's just ridiculous. But also what's happening as well, if you notice this match is anything Shawn Michaels is doing is he slapping Hulk Hogan or he's giving him a chop because he knows that's going to actually hurt him. So he's full on slapping him or he's giving him the famous Ric Flair chops. So it's just a match that's, and you can kind of see Hulk Hogan with what is going on here, like <laughs> what's happening. Uh, but yeah, I just love it because it's kind of like, a, right, you're not going to do good business for us both and this is what I can do to you. And it just shows you as well what a wrestler can do 
if they really want to like make it look bad because Hogan does not look good much in this match at all. Because but in that situation, if you're Hulk <clears throat> Hogan, what can you do? Because he's overselling it, ridiculously. So there's no way he can take control of that situation. He, well, yeah, he know he kind of no sells the overselling. He just carries on. He doesn't suddenly go like. Right, well, well, that's me, I'm off. But yeah, okay. it's honestly, it's such an interesting match and such an interesting story because it just shows you what happens when. But I just can't believe Hulk Hogan would do that to Shawn Michaels. It, I, fair enough, if he did it to sort of like someone lesser down in the car, but Shawn Michaels was the guy that stayed with WWF and, you know, he was the guy, wasn't he? I don't it's know if politics. it's because of what happened. Hulk Hogan's so shady. There's yeah. some stories about it. Have you heard the story with The Undertaker? I, I don't know. I might, maybe so, even mind he, Him and The Undertaker don't get on because... So, obviously, Hulk Hogan was the man, right? He's the most famous wrestler ever, probably. Yeah, I mean, he generated... <laughs> he made wrestling into this kind of global phenomenon so when, with the man. When The Undertaker was starting out, um, he's obviously getting over as well and getting like a big character, and they had the match together. And um, The Undertaker did a tombstone on him. And everyone's fine, they finished the match. And then afterwards, Hulk Holmes, oh, you're so dangerous. Like, I have my neck. Uh, like, you've, you could have brought my neck. You're so dangerous. Like, I'm not working with you again. And Undertaker's quite new in the WWF, so he's like really like shutting himself, like, oh no, I'm so sorry. Like, they watch mm. the video back, and Hulk Hogan's head is nowhere near the mat. Right. He's just done it because he knows, like, it, like Hulk Hogan buries people all the time. And this is one of the instances he tried to do it to the Undertaker. But so after that, like, Hulk Hogan, uh, Undertaker, I wanted nothing to do with Hulk Hogan at all. But uh, like, what? there's so many instances of that. Another one, <laughs> talking to Hulk Hogan <laughs> again, WCW. Now, I didn't realise this was a work in, like, storyline mode. Um, storyline mode. In storyline kind of way. I only recently kind of found this out. But So, Hulk Hogan's last match for WCW was a title match against Jeff Jarrett, right? And... Hogan didn't want to drop the belt to Jeff Jarrett. He did a kind of like what he was doing to Bret Hart. This is like what was really happening. He's like, I'm not dropping the belt to Jeff. I'll drop it to anyone else. And He's three Madonnas. I know. Uh, but what... I mean, it's only a good thing Vince Russo wanted to do. He wanted Jeff Jarrett to get the belt and then Booker T win the belt off of Jeff Jarrett. Right. Mm. So he's saying to... Hulk all day, he was, and this is true, he was on him all day, he was like, right, we're going to make you look amazing, but you're not winning the belt. Hogan's like, no. And Hogan had a creative control in his contract. So he was like, no, I'm not losing the belt. I've got creative control. I'm winning the belt. That's what's happening. So, and so this is what they came up with, and this is what happened. So he had the idea, he went, right, what if... Jeff Jarrett comes out um, and he just lies down and you pin him. That's it. And we do this whole, I'll do a speech where I say, you know, uh, you didn't want to lose the belt to Jeff and we make it kind of realistic. And so <laughs> it's really complicated. You have to watch it. But, um, and then you kind of throw the belt away because you're not happy. And then the next night, we do it and Booker T wins the belt. And Hulk Hogan was fine with that. So they did that. So he comes out. Jeff Jarrett just lies on the, the thing. Now, I always thought this was real. Like, uh, Vince Russo was trying to screw Hogan over, but Hogan was in on it, apparently. And, I, well, I think he is. He was in on it because I've heard Bischoff tell the story saying that they planned it. That's how it was meant to be. However... So they've done it. Hogan and Bischoff leave the stadium. But they didn't know what Vince Russo was going to say. So Vince Russo did this speech where he's totally burying Hogan, where he's like, that he's like, that piece of shit isn't going to work for this company anymore. He, 
I've been on Hogan all day. He didn't want to drop the belt to um, think like breaking kayfabe and going. He yeah, used yeah. his creative control. I say kind of <clears> true, but Hogan was kind of in on it. Hogan, then his phone's blown up and was like, have you seen what Russell's saying about you? And then the people ringing him don't know that that's the plan. But Hogan, instead of being like, don't worry, that's the plan, that's what we're going to do, he acts like he didn't know that was the plan, and he tries to sue Vince Russell for definition of character. And that's what he did. Well, see, so he went back on what the actual plan was. Money and politics. Yeah. But at the time, I thought it was real. That's how realistic it is, because Vince Russell really goes in on Hogan. But then, as well, because Hogan sort of tried to sue him, it kind of made it look real, but Hogan was like, no, I'm not having that one. It's crazy. And honestly. did he successfully sue him? I think he did, yeah. I think he's on Ring of Honor. Yeah, it's crazy. That was his last match. He was at a, I think it was Bassett Beach. But yeah, that's, so I kind of went on a tangent then about Hogan, but. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, Hogan is. There's so many bad stories um, about him. People have strong opinions about Hulk Hogan, aren't mm. they? To say the least. He's not a nice guy. <laughs> hmm. But there you go. We'll get it there. Okay, so I'll go for my pick next. My last one. This match is, I know for a fact, when John and his missus got together, <laughs> she was like, what, what is wrestling? What, what, what is it about? And John said, listen, sit down, love. Let's watch <laughs> this uh, match. Uh, it was the Undertaker... The uh, these mankind against mankind. Mm. Um, <laughs> this match is just so bizarre in every little instance. So, <laughs> Freya was like, Why is he not in prison? He should be in prison. She doesn't <laughs> understand what was going on. She's like, You can't do that to a person. <laughs> so it was Undertaker and Mankind, and it was a relatively new Hell in a Cell, or was it the, was it the first the, Hell in a Cell? It was. The third match, but the second one you can't really count. Mm. So, um, both, they didn't really know what they were going to do um, in the match. They kind of just were going to go off the cuff, which, if you know Mankind, you probably shouldn't do. Um, <laughs> so, they're wrestling in the ring, and Mankind wants to go up on top of the cage, on top of the Hell in a Cell, which... Um, I'll skip forward so best that they end up on the top of the Hell in a Cell. Just quickly though, do you oh. know uh, so when they were planning this match and Mick Fuller was like, I want to be on top of the cage. Vince McMahon said to him, oh, have you have you been up there and seen what it's like? And Mick Fuller was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. He hadn't Which been up he there. Hadn't. <laughs> and he hadn't. Yeah. Because he's in his autobiography, he said, as soon as I got up there, I realised I'd made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, so he just was like, he was just like, I'll just go up there on the night. It'll be all right on the night. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, they get on top of the, uh, on top of the Hell in a Cell. Now, like I said, it's an early Hell in a Cell uh, structure. So, they have um, zip ties. Or, <laughs> uh, what, what is it called in America? They're called... Zip locks? Uh, zip ties? I think they call it zip ties, don't they? Zip ties. Well, no, yeah, you know the black ones that you pour and you get, yeah, mm. rocks. So as they're standing it, standing on the cage, the Hell in a Cell, they ping off, don't they? Mm. Um, <laughs> which should be a red flag, but no. <laughs> and um, but it's kind of a lot. A lot of the times you find with WWE is when they come up with these matches, they don't think of the practicality of it. They just think of how yeah. it looks. So the Hell in a Cell, the first couple of Hell in a Cells was just because it looks mm. great. It's the, the Elimination Chamber was the same. It's, you know. Yeah, apparently the Elimination Chamber was so painful on the uh, like the metal grid. Mm. The Punjabi um, Prison was another one that was just how it looked. I didn't think of the practicality of it. Really awful, actually. <laughs> so, um, my hand gets slammed on the Hell in a Cell and it dips so much in. It looks, it looks like it's going to go free. Yeah. Um, and then they get towards the, <laughs> the the edge of the Hell in a Cell. Mankind just says, throw me off. 
Which mm. one's taking frozen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're gonna take a froze mankind off. And he just it's like he's in air for like 20 seconds. It's the perfect way to fall as well, though. If he was an inch of the way, he's a dead man. Yeah. It helps like, it's amazing. Yeah. And he lands spot on the announce table. The announce table just smashes and crumbles. Mm. <laughs> and uh, do you want to deliver JR's famous line? He's broken... Anyway, well, there's a few in that, Matt. He's yeah. broken in half. Oh, my God, they killed him. He's dead. Uh, he's dead, stop, God damn it. Stop the damn match. Stop the damn match. <laughs> yeah. Um, this... I mean, it is a horrendous bump. And mm. you can tell the commentators and everyone's like, oh, that, wow, that's that's bad. So... They were going to win the match. Yeah, Sorry, they, yeah they, wanted we... to end the, they wanted to end the match down there. So a few EMTs and a few people came down. It was a, yeah, they brought in a... Sorry. I know you're telling the story, but they brought in like a real stretcher. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they, they thought that was the match over. Yeah. This is it. He's no chance. Now, so he goes on the stretcher. He's got a dislocated mankind, arm as well. He has got, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> and Mankind, in his head, he's getting rolled up the ramp and he just says, I'm not having that. Let's, let's do more. So um, he gets <laughs> off the, the stretcher and people are literally grabbing him like trying and saying don't go back don't go back his arms limp as well it's that yeah badly, isn't it? he's like <laughs> yeah um so he he climbs up the cage again and Untaker's, oh, waiting, Untaker's waiting for him there's a bit yeah, of a scrap as well sorry so they were left in the cage up one day so they could get round and Undertaker was on top the whole time yes no I thought it was after yes mm. so when the um when they're trying to get the stretch around the um, announce table, because of the Hound and Cell, they couldn't really fit the, the wheels around. So they lift the, they lift the Hound and Cell up, which the Untaker's actually still stood on. So, mm. I mean, Untaker Not, must be quite well, Yeah, he, he had no idea what was going on. He didn't know if he was alive or anything. So he's just yeah. like waiting there to be told everything's all right or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So, Mankind goes back up. Bear in mind, this match was not you know, it wasn't fought out. Nobody said, right, we'll do this and we'll do that. They just thought, we'll just go with it. It's not even um, the main event. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> Mankind climbs up to the top of the cage again. Uh, skip forward. The Undertaker choke slams him. And mm. the cage door just, if the cage is like, it just pings open, doesn't it? Like the the, the ceiling of the, the helmet <laughs> cell. And Mankind fuds on the mat so hard that his teeth comes out. This sounds bizarre when I say that. <laughs> but so he, he hits the mat, his teeth comes flying out and lands in his nose. Yeah. And he gets hit by a chair at the same time. Yes. So there's also a, because <laughs> yes, the second time mankind goes up the hell himself, he chucks him in a chair, chair. Like, doesn't he? And <laughs> when he gets choke slammed, the chair's actually underneath him. Yeah. when he gets slammed but as he falls the chair kind of swaps and lands on top of him <laughs> yeah. um, it's a weird emotion um, yeah, no, it's crazy <laughs> yeah. it's the fact his, his teeth was and then in his nose like oh, and he it. it looks like he's smiling doesn't it that's the famous bet he's then, like <laughs> yeah it kind of he's like he huddles to the turnbuckle <laughs> And he crashes in the temple and the, ca the camera's literally there in the corner. And it looks like he's laughing, like, sort of like mm. a clown, like, you know, like kind of an evil laugh with his nose just poking out. His, sorry, his teeth poking out of his nose. Yeah. Um, and then the... So <laughs> is that when the cage goes up again and Undertaker climbs down? Um, no, they're kind of trying to stop it, aren't they? Yeah. It's I mean, it's only like a it's only like a six minute match or something. This is crazy. This match. I know. So but they're trying to stop it because they know yeah. like Mick's not in a good way. So Terry Funk comes in, who's meant to be. I, I love this bit. He's meant to be mankind's rival. So the commentators have got to explain like, oh, even though the rivals, you know, um, he's obviously concerned for his health and stuff like that. Yeah. But my, he's what he's doing is trying to. 
I'm sure you've seen interviews of saying what we were trying to do is trying to kill time till Mick can get his yeah. bearings. So, so <laughs> when Undertaker finally gets into the ring, and bear he's, in mind, got a, he's got a broken ankle in this match as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has. <laughs> um, there's so much in this six minutes. Tonight. I'm trying to kind of get everything into one. So, right, but the, sorry. He had a broken ankle before this match. This is why they kind of tried to get around that by doing the stuff on the top of the cage so they didn't have to do too much. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, that was yeah. the plan. Sorry. Yeah, the and there's just so much coming to my head about this. I know. Um, so Undertaker goes into the ring and Terry Funkin and all the EMTs and, you know, staff are there. And <laughs> the, the mankind's lying down and the Undertaker goes to. Now, how's it going now? So the Undertaker says to Terry Funk, see if he's alive. Yeah. See alive. Terry mm. Funk goes over, checks him, and he goes, <laughs> my hand's alive, he's all right. Then the Undertaker chokes him <laughs> so hard that his shoe comes flying off. Both his shoes come off. It's his crazy. Yeah, his shoes come flying <laughs> off and they land next to mankind. And mankind's been out of, been going in and out of conscience between this whole segment. And mm. there's a funny story where Mark kind of wakes up and said, and just thinks, the first thing he thinks is, where did them shoes come from? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's much still isn't over yet though, is it? God, I can't, what happens next then? He brings out the thumb sacks. Yes, so then he brings <laughs> out uh, the thumb sacks and he gets slammed on him. He's, bear mind, he's got... So he's got this dislocated arm, so he's only a sort of like one arm. He can't lift this arm at all. It's crazy to watch it. But yeah, but he brings mankind. up thumbtacks. It's mankind that gets a thumbtacks out. Yeah. Ben, ben, just think about that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy gnarly dude. So yeah, he gets his thumbtacks out. Um, he gets slammed on and the 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 pierce his, his bum, his back, his neck, his oh, head. It's horrible. Like a pincushion. Mm. He just looks like a broken man, and the contents are just like this is this is just enough. Is enough. Stop the damn um, match. <laughs> um, um, I think that's it, doesn't it? And then it comes to a kind of abrupt end. Yeah. So then, when the match is over, they, they, they bring the stretcher down, and Man Kane says, "Haven't I already been on a stretcher tonight?" Because he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't even to this day. He doesn't remember this match, and they're like, and the, yeah, yeah, "Yeah, you have it once well." And he's like, "I'm not going to stretch it twice." And he walks to the back. Yeah, he says and done it in an interview. I can deal with being on a stretch once, but I'm not being the guy who is on a stretch <laughs> twice in the same match. In his head, that was good logic. What's crazy as well, I think that's the match you've pretty much covered. Is that? There's a match afterwards, and Undertaker and Mankind do a run-in. Yeah. How? How? Because Mankind is just, <laughs> just... His matches are just mental. That Him. match, I think, is so good because you couldn't script the stuff that happened. You couldn't plan that match like that and make but it look good. It's the contators that make it as well. Like, people yeah. say commentators don't do anything. They bloody do. Oh, uh, JR's, like, the best commentator. But his be. commentary just adds so much more depth and element to the match. I think, though, he was genuinely, like, worried yeah. for him. Because yeah. he was... he was. I mean, it's good watching him now because you know he's all right afterwards. But, like, imagine watching that live. Because no one had ever well, seen anything like that before. You've seen a guy imagine. getting chucked off a 30-foot cage. So you're there, you're JR, or you're, you know, Pablo, is it? Is he the Spanish... Um, yeah. <laughs> or you're even behind the commentators, you know, on the first row, and you just see this guy go... Because he, like, he gets mangled in the barricade, doesn't he? It? It's like... It's crazy. When he falls off the hand out, it's just... So, it's, it just... It comes so fast, when it, it feels like it's so slow in time. It's, it's very bizarre. I mean, going for the cage, though, I think it's even worse because they weren't expecting that. No. Like, he kind of... Because he can kind of get in a safe position to fall, but he wasn't expecting to go for the cage, so it's like... And it's the fact that on the cage, 
he got slammed on the chair, but then the chair kind of landed on top of him. Mm. And it knocks, teeth, it knocks him out. Yeah, and his teeth comes out and goes into his nose. Like, how does that... It just... It's, physics, it's, it's weird. It's so weird. It's, it's... For the drama, it's one of the best matches to watch, isn't it? And Mankind, actually, or Mick Foley, sorry, um, says he considers his career post Hell in a Cell and pre Hell in a Cell. Mm. <laughs> like that match defined who he was. Because after that, yeah. he had some matches. Like, remember um, the Big Show and Mankind in the Boiler match? Boiler Room yeah. match. Yeah, Boiler Room match. You know, from that Hell in a Cell match, his, like, Triple H and Catches Jack. As well, though, it's a, it's a pinnacle of WWF because I think that's when it started. Because you imagine, right, everyone's watching WCW and then WWF pull that out the back. Mm. That kind of match, everyone's like, oh, my God. I'm sure yeah. I've seen in interviews WCW people watching it and they're like, oh, they've, they've got money there. They're, they're winning this. Yeah. Like, they couldn't believe what they were seeing because it was just... I mean, they try and replicate it now, don't they? But it's never going to be that. You're never going to be shocked by anything you see anymore. And when I say about the referee's like plays a key role, there's nothing the referee could really do because mankind was set on finishing the match and kind of giving the audience. Yeah, what again, it it's just yeah. proper tripper and like I'm finishing this match no matter what. Yeah. Like they could have easily just stopped the match after we got four off the cage because that would be legitimate. Like yeah, he's thrown off thirty feet. Done. You're not mm. watching that. You're not going to go. Ah, come on. You can get up. Do you know what I mean? I think another thing as well is to note is, um, Undertaker when he chuck slams, um, mankind before the fun tax, he says to mankind, "Go home." And he finally <laughs> said, "Go home" a few times. Yeah. So go home just means like finish the match. Um, it's crazy. So you know, people think, "Oh, it's the Undertaker's fault." Or they might, might criticise Undertaker, but Undertaker was was like, "This is enough." Again, it's like he's in the position Kurt Angle was in with Shane McMahon. It's kind of like if the other guys like no, because you can't suddenly be like, "Right," <laughs> you can't. You, you imagine being in front of a crowd and you're wanting to finish, and the other guy doesn't. You kind of just got to carry on. Mm -hmm. The one that doesn't want to finish is always going to win. The, the best moments are unplanned for sure, mm -hmm. like. Um, let me just think of a good, good example. <laughs> so when it was Rock and Mankind and the Rock glasses fell off. Yeah. It? <laughs> it, it was doing the whole, you know, in the eyebrow, like he does his twitch. Yeah. The glasses fell off. And <laughs> <laughs> Mick, Mick Foley just creased with laughter and the Rock <laughs> kind of had to kind of break character as well. Um, yeah, so there, there's a few unscripted ones. Ones <clears throat> I've said to you and ones... We never really spoke about. We speak about the character, but never really about the moment. As the shockmaster moment, which for me is just one of the funniest things you're ever going to see. We always refer to people as like, oh, "He's a shockmaster of that," or "The shockmaster yeah. of this." So, anyone who doesn't know about the shockmaster, <laughs> just go on YouTube and watch it. It is comical. So, so it's do again, it's WCW. Of course, yeah. it is. And so there's a tag team match. It's going to be, like I said, Vicious, David Boy Smith, who's Brett's Bulldog, and I don't know who his partner was. There was three of them, and it was Sting, and I can't remember who his partner is. And they're having a mystery partner. They're usually when you have a mystery partner, it's something you know, but this wasn't, this was introducing a new character. And so, the more, so, yeah, like big time. But so this new character is Earthquake, who was a pretty well known wrestler. But so he's this new wrestler called the Shockmaster. And his, his ring is weird. It's like a furry waistcoat. And Something it's that a, Pat Buckshield would wear. <laughs> it's a Stormtrooper mask, like a real Stormtrooper mask, but it's been glitter. It's got glitter all over it. Because nothing like says to, tough like glitter. I like to refer to it as the Stormtrooper mask that's had a pajazzle. Yeah. And so the renter goes, you're going to be shocked at our partner. 
it's the Shockmaster. So they do it. And so the idea was that Shockmaster is going to burst through this wall. But he does it. <laughs> and he falls over. Because he doesn't totally go through the whole wall. He kind of trips <clears> over <throat> and falls over. And his Stormtrooper mask falls off. And he's rummaging for it. And then he... Oh, it's comical. And he puts it on. But it's not his voice saying the speech that's on. <laughs> it's like a dub. Someone else speaking for him. And he says all this speech. But you can hear um, the British Bulldog <laughs> say, if you listen very carefully, you can hear him go, oh, he's fell his fucking ass. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> and this is like, it's really like over the top cheesy as well, like their reactions. Because the, the paratechs as well go, boom, like there's a big, you know. <laughs> smoke and everything. <laughs> it's, he's fell his bloody ass. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so funny. But it's unscripted, but not a good unscripted, I think. Everyone knows the Shockmaster, and everyone, I think everyone fears the Shockmaster, don't they? Yeah. In a negative way, obviously. But it, obviously you had your, uh, the one at the Royal Rumble where he fell, which is your favourite. Uh, Titus. That? Titus Oh, O'Neil. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I ever have a bad day, I look up the Titus O'Neil box when he, when he runs into the <laughs> ring because if you listen carefully as well when he runs and he falls he goes <laughs> <laughs> he makes his horrible sound <laughs> and then uh, um, Corey uh, Graves just creases with laughter it's just it's just a beautiful moment <laughs> 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 yeah I love moments like that another really good moment as well is um, so it's Mankind on the Rock again um and the mankind, mankind has the mic, but he has some kind of sound effect on. Mm. So his voice is dead, like squeaky. And yeah. So then. I the love this story. The rock has the mic and he starts talking and he goes, Yeah, Jabroni. But he goes, Yeah, Jabroni. And he's got the squeaky <laughs> voice. And then one goes, Hmm. And he tries, trying not to laugh. And he looks a bit <laughs> like the sound guy who was obviously needs to change it. So that's talking again. And it's, man, it's that squeaky voice again of mankind. And this goes on for about like three different, you no, know, the rock tries three different times and it's still the squeaky voice. Yeah. And the audience are just laughing to laugh at mankind. I, I love when wrestlers are trying to make each other laugh during wrestling matches and that. Do you know that's why the rock would oversell the stunner? Yeah. Because yeah, he's like, I, I just want Stone Cold to laugh. He's like, yeah. I'd proper like overdo it it's just to see him sort of try and not laugh at it. What as well, do you. Do you remember when Vince McMahon, it's during the invasion angle and Vince McMahon's doing this speech and after every word, uh, Stone Cold's kind of repeating it. But he's trying to make everyone sort of laugh. Yeah, you know, I that? do know that, yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of, um, I think it's the water boy, you know, when the, the coach is giving the speech, motivation, yeah. and the guy goes, motivation. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's another good one, which I've just forgot about. Um, I had one just then as well. That was really funny. It's a Daniel know. Bryan moment. Do you remember that one? Oh, when it when he's you see his uh, his vegan sausage. No, I didn't mean that bad, but <laughs> you know what my one about? No. Oh, and no. he's popped out. Yeah, yeah he's really he popped, popped That's not what I meant, though. I mean, when they were. Um... Do you remember when they were? Like unveiling the belt or something, and it was all champions. So it's like uh, Mark Henry, CM Punk, The Miz, Daniel Bryan, and someone else. And Vince and uh, Triple H is trying to talk, but the crowd just keeps chanting Daniel Bryan. Right. And like it really gets louder and louder to the fact that you can't hear Triple H. And like you just see Daniel Bryan like smiling, like. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's proper old, I wouldn't. But yeah, that's not what I was gonna say. When they tried, it was a house show, I believe. When they tried to get the Undertaker to do the spinner, the spinner, yeah, oh, that's so funny that. Because Vince McMahon comes out as well, don't they? <laughs> they all do it, don't they? It yeah, was going the on for is. ages. Like it wasn't. It was after. Um, I think it was after a SmackDown. Right. So sometimes what they do is they'll, well, they, I don't think they do it as much anymore, but they used to come out and they'll do like extra things because, as well, talking about overselling, that's where the, 
you must have seen the famous one with Triple H where he gets kicked and then the thing and he's like yeah um oh, hold on where he's like uh like proper like staggering for ages and Sean Michaels is, Mike, Shawn Shawn Michaels is like yeah that was a that was after like a live record and they kind of do the match just for the crowd yeah there when you go to house shows though like you've been to house shows, haven't you, with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like the wrestling you see is kind of a bit more fun and not as like um thing. They have a bit of fun with it. I remember Dean Ambrose proper being like over the top with stuff and it's quite well, fun to watch. When they went to a commercial break and it was a big show and everyone was shouting big slow. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so the big show give um what did they say? So it says something at Manchester, it was like, yeah, well, Manchester. What did he said something, didn't he? And it was a quite, I can't remember what he said, but it was really funny what he said, mm. giving it, giving it back. Mm. Yeah, I, that's why I always say to people, like, yeah, it's good seeing Raw and SmackDown live, but even like the tours I do, you know, when you see WWE live, they are always mm. good to see because you kind of see them a bit more relaxed and just having a bit of fun with the wrestling. It's yeah, so yeah. good to watch, and honestly. Because you think, oh, nothing's going to happen on the tour. But I remember watching a match, I think it was in Sheffield, and it was um, Randy Orton against Seth Rollins, and he was champion at the time. And I honestly thought Randy Orton was going to win for the best, because it was a championship match, and I thought, because it looked like he was going to win, it was that good a match. Obviously, they do do that sometimes, but like you can proper, you prop against it, and but, you, you don't always know who's going to win the matches. Like you'll believe like it's going to go one way, but Seth Rollins ended up winning. But it's so good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love seeing live wrestling. I, like, hopefully now we can get back to normal. Um, yeah. Wrestling shows are starting to come out of the woodworks, which is good. Mm. So. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Definitely want to see some. Yeah. Good picks there, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. there's loads, aren't there? There's loads. We had some good ones sent in, didn't we, on the Instagram? Yeah, so I asked, um, you know, what's your favourite moment that goes off the script? Somebody said um, the pipe bomb, CM Punk. Somebody said the famous Booker T um, against Hulk Hogan. Mm. <laughs> We're um, coming for you. Yeah, oh, that was. <laughs> such a funny clip. It's funny. But it's because, like, Booker T can't hide his disappointment in what he did. So he literally, he says the N-word, but he kind of says it like a rappy gangster way. And he's just like, as soon as he's, he's like, Hogan, we're coming for you. And then he sort of, like, does that as he said it. Yeah. <laughs> it's mad, yeah. Um, we had about uh, when um, Mean Gene uh, was... Uh, he was interviewing someone and the, the backdrop fell behind him. <laughs> yeah. And he, um, it, it uh, caused him to swear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's loads out there, aren't there? Mm. And they still happen. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. But yeah, I think we definitely like moments that go off script. It, it gives you a, a proper look into wrestling and just what they have to do to kind of keep up with think on the feet the match well. yeah good yeah. I enjoyed this episode it's been Triggered. a while since we've done the episode just me and you I know it's weird isn't it <laughs> <laughs> um, but don't worry because next week we do have a guest mm. uh, I won't say just yet I'll announce that on Instagram and social media uh, this week so yeah um, thank you for watching We've hit over 500 subscribers now, so thank you very much. According to yeah. YouTube, we've got enough um, subscribers to fill a jumbo jet. <laughs> <laughs> they emailed us, didn't they? Yeah, it's quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah. So if yeah, you haven't subscribed, you though, subscribe. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't, if you, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this, subscribe. Just one <laughs> click, done. You might be listening. Some people just listen. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously, we're anywhere that you find your podcast from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify, Breaker, you name mm -hmm. it. We're on it. 
Um, yeah, so we're going to have another episode for you next week. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you, John, for joining me as always. You're welcome. <laughs> always a pleasure. Always. <laughs> uh, and, uh, we'll see you all soon. See you later.